I'm a robot vacuum cleaner, so yeah, I got one gig. I suck up dirt, so pardon my inferiority complex about Geico, who does so much more. Like, not only could they save their customers money on car insurance, but they got fast and friendly claim service, too. And an award-winning mobile app. Plus access to licensed agents 24-7. Who am I kidding? I can't even do corners. Uh-oh. Choking hazard. <gasps> Popcorn girdles. Geico. Expect great savings and a whole lot more. Don Lebatard. Yeah, I'm going to put it on the poll. Are you disturbed at all that Stugatz thinks extortion and blackmail are normal business practices? Stugatz. It has to drive you crazy because you are smart, you are well thought out, you are reasonable, you are balanced, and I just come in with blackmail, COB. And they like, love you more. Oh, uh, yep, spot on. And is what I'm saying. so envious. <laughs> I want their love. <laughs> You're not going to get it. Their love's important to me. I want the love of dumb people. This is the Dan Lebatar show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. Were they showing footage of uh, Fat Chris juggling from last night? Yeah, the mega cast last night. Kenny G was performing. We had a counter programming <laughs> to the Kendrick Lamar halftime show. Kenny G played for 12 minutes while Christopher Cody, uh, Greg Cody's son, Morange, <laughs> was painted orange and juggling. Here's your Sports Center update. Draymond Green was fined $25,000 on Monday for criticizing the NBA's officiating. Antonio Brown practiced for the first time in three weeks. That's big. And finally, McCarran International Airport TSA agents stopped a passenger last Tuesday after they found a dead cougar inside one of his bags during the screening process. The passenger told agents he had been hunting and showed them fish and gaming tags that were placed on the animal, although it is not illegal to transport dead animals, officials declined the option to ship the cougar. The passenger ended up shipping the cougar via FedEx. For all the latest headlines and information, tune in the Sports Center on ESPN Radio all throughout the day. He's a Hall of Famer, bad man. Terrell Davis with us on behalf of the Vizio Top Value Performer TVP Award. If you want to vote for the TVP, visit Vizio.com. Slash TVP probably hurting today. Went to the University of Georgia. Man. Yeah, we will talk to him a second. What What is your greatest allegiance here? Uh, your greatest sports allegiance, Mister Davis. And thank you for being on with us. Is to whom? Is it to your collegiate school? Is it to the Broncos? Is it to someone else? Well, before I say that, man, I'm I'm interested in hearing who the passenger was that had the Cooper in the, in the suitcase. Yeah, yeah I mean, yeah. I'm I want more details on that story as well. <laughs> I don't have any more details. I mean, I'll That's do some research. What more details yes. would you like? Maybe, right. Ter- okay. maybe Terrell, is there I- any, any questions you have? We can then call somebody and get the answers to your questions. Well, I- well, I thought that may have been like a, an ex-player or something like that. I thought that's where where you were going with that, but no, I mean, it's just a random story. story. No, just a random okay. story. Yeah, but I could okay. see like an athlete do it. Like I could see, well, yes. Well, who was the teammate that you had that was because uh, the Broncos have that wolf guy, and I've been told he's crazy and he chases Tom Brady and threatens to eat his children. Um, who <laughs> who's the crazy craziest teammate Terrell Davis ever had? Oh, I had a few of them. Alfred, Alfred, Alfred Williams was one of them. So he, he, he was a little, 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 little off, but uh, I, don't, I don't know if he would go hunting and, and bring a cougar back in a suitcase. But, he but what, when a guy's off like that, though, what do you do? Are you afraid of him off the field? Like, how does that work when a guy's a little bit off? Um, yeah, a little bit off the field. I think you you try to keep him in the locker room on the field. That's that's a safe haven right there. You know he's going to be okay there, but. <laughs> Anytime you go off the field, you got to be careful, man. But but Alfred's cool now. He's doing radio in Denver, so uh, I, I know he's normal now. Do you? But wh- back to your, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, I was going to back to your question about my, about my allegiance. You're asking me about my collegiate allegiance or my pro allegiance. I'm just asking you the thing that's most likely to make Terrell Davis when watching a sporting event is blank. Uh, probably Denver. If I'm watching Denver. Um, you know, I have a little. Uh, there, you know, I'm obviously I'm I'm tied to both. I mean, last night was hard. Not last night was tough, and I think so. So for so many years, you know, Georgia's been kind of the team that's been the you know the kind of the the little brother, right? And Bama's been the big brother. And uh, you had a chance last night to to kind of flip the roles there, and the game was going as planned early. And then all of a sudden, Alabama went to that secret secret weapon. I don't know where Tua came from. Um, and he comes in, and just, the game just changes. The energy he brought, uh, the plays they started to make, and then you can kind of sense at that at that point, pretty much late in the fourth quarter, or actually early fourth quarter, 
where you felt like Bama kind of knew they would win this game and Georgia kind of hoped they would win. And uh, they started to play a little bit conservative. You start to play not to lose instead of, you know, instead of playing to win. And uh, I think that that, know. Terrell, tell me what you think. I think that that's what is actually choking in sports. Not the things that people think where you go mentally totally soft on something. It happens like that. You're just a little more fearful than you would normally be, and then you become conservative, and that's where choking happens. Yeah, yeah, and you, and you can tell because – when you're up by 10 points, it's 20 to 10, and you feel like, okay, what's the worst thing we can do? Is to throw a pick, to, you know, to be too aggressive and do something that's, that puts us in, in harm's way. And then you start to think, okay, if we run the ball, that's, that's safe, right? That's safe. You know, time is eating off the clock. You know, we're doing, we're, we're doing things by the book. But, you know, when I, when I was fortunate to win those two championships, we were, you know, we had to be aggressive and we couldn't change. We didn't allow the, the moment or the the situation to dictate how we played. And I think that's an important thing in sports, especially in football. You've got to say, we're, we, we're playing to win. And everything we do is going to be in that direction. And you have to know when, when you have momentum shifts and you have a player who's injected into a game who is changing the, the tempo, who is changing the energy level, you've got to match that. And I think Georgia matched that in the second half and only scoring seven points in the second half. And kind of kind of, their playbook seemed to be, all right, we score 20 points, we win this game. Instead of saying, we need to put 27 up, we need to put 30, you know, whether it's 32, 33, whatever it is, we got to put points on the, on the board and um, didn't do that. I think choking's a bit strong, though, guys. I do. I think choking's a bit strong. No, what I mean, I'm I mean, saying they no, were up three I, no, with no, a second no, and twenty six. No, I mean. What I'm saying is, that I don't believe choking is something that exists in sports where somebody who was strong suddenly becomes mentally weak. What I'm saying is that that's what choking looks like, where a team just goes a little more conservative and it costs them the game because they weren't as fearless as they normally are. Terrell Davis and, is. And it, go ahead. And go you know ahead. what? You know what? Here's an example, and it's, I think we all have, have experienced it. it it's, experienced it. If you play golf, you play golf, right, and you've got a good round going, and you stand up on an 18 tee, what, there's something that's different about the 18 tee. Instead of just thinking, all right, I'm just going to go ahead and knock the, you know, get right. my driver down in the middle of the fairway, we get conservative, right? We go with the iron. You think, all right, got to put this phone in the fairway, so let me go down to an iron or a three wood. And so that's not the same mentality. You're, you're trying to protect a good score versus I'm going to go get – this great round. Yep. And it happens just like that. He's so right about yeah, that. Yeah, but Terrell, but Terrell, here's what I'll tell you. Phil Mickelson pulled out a driver 18th hole of the U.S. Open and lost. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. He had his foot on the pedal. Yeah, that's, that's fine, but it's yeah, fearless. Okay. okay. All right. That's one example. <laughs> no, but, no, but he's right, though. Better to die yes. that way. Better, yes. better to die fearlessly yes. than to live a coward. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> um, uh, what are you doing with Vizio? Can you explain it to us? Yeah, so Vizio, this is their top value performer, and basically this is an award that recognizes the player who's on the field performance, it, it most exceeds the value of their contract. Uh, last year winner was Spencer Ware. Um, it's the 11th year that, uh, that Vizio is doing this, and fans can go vote. They can vote as many times as they like. They just have to go to Vizio.com forward slash TVP, and you can vote from now until uh, January 14th. Um, it's an outstanding award, and the the candidates uh, are on that are are some good guys. You know, uh, Spencer won last year, but uh, Devontae Adams is one. Alex Collins, Jordan Howard, Alvin Kamara, and Jared McKinnon are all the uh, the nominees for this award. So it's pretty cool for somebody to be recognized for something they're doing on the field that is, you know, their effort that is that is beyond their contract. So please go vote. It's pretty simple. Terrell, I'm going to give you a few words, and then maybe you can piece the whole story together for us, okay? Because I'm sure this will jog your memory. Japan, chili dog, french fries, candy. Yeah. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Nachos. What else am I throwing there? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's the story? What's the story? Uh, you and Stugatz have a secret joke that none of us know what it's about. He's about, hey, yeah. it'd be rude to the guest again, man. Chito, no, sorry about him. Yeah, TD. sorry, sorry, Terrell. Uh, that's okay. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, that's all right. I mean, basically, those were, those were some of the uh, the items that I I, uh, I enjoyed before I was put into a game, the preseason game in, in, in Tokyo, Japan, where I ran down on the field, and it was actually my first play um, in my my pro career. I ran down and made a tackle on special teams in Tokyo, Japan, at the American Bowl, and because uh, I didn't think I was going to play in the game, so. 
you know, our veterans on the sideline eating food, and I figured, hey, I'm starving. I might as well join them. And uh, but and I, and I also after I ran out and made that tackle, I had to, I had to, I had to give it up. You know, so I went to the sideline and, and threw up a little bit as well. So. But uh, yeah, that was uh, that's what I ate before. Well, I what the hell were you doing? Like, what are you doing? I was eating a buffet. Uh, what are you? Were you not disciplined about your eating? Are you like a big candy eater? He didn't think he was going to play. No, I was a rookie, man. I didn't think I was going to play. I didn't play in the first preseason game. I didn't think I was going to play in this game. And so, what do you I mean? I'm Is that not, how you were discovered? Is that the play where you were discovered? That was it. That was it. Ah. That was the play. Wait a minute. That what? The, your Hall of Fame career? Co- what? Yeah. Your Hall of Fame career as a sixth round pick was born because you had a bunch of junk food on the sidelines, made the tackle, and then vomited on the sidelines? <laughs> that was it. That was, that was the bird. That was the play that got me noticed. That was the play where they said, all right, next series, Davis, you're going in at running back. Ah. That was the play. That was the first play I think John Elway had even, had even said my name. And how that much was vomit was there on the sidelines? And then you won him two Super Bowls. How much vomit? Yeah, and then you won him two Super Bowls. <laughs> how much? I mean, it was typical vomit. It was, it was, it was nothing. It wasn't, it wasn't like the, the, the one that, like, the projectile type vomit. It was just, you know. But it seems think, really irresponsible. Was there a buffet on the sideline? <laughs> it it I don't seems really irresponsible and <laughs> unprofessional of you. No, it wasn't. At the time, I felt real good about eating up that food. You know, I felt real good about it. It wouldn't change. I was hungry. All right. Very what good. Do do? Uh, yeah. uh, sat- satisfy your appetite. Terrell Davis is with us on behalf of the Vizio Top Value Performer TVP Award to vote for the TVP visit. Vizio.com slash TVP. Thank you, sir. We appreciate catching up with you. Thank you, guys. Have a good one. All right. You too. To be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! I think I'm going to have a public beef here. You think I'm being rude today. I think I'm going to have a public beef today with Stan Van Gundy. I think I'm going to do that next. Really? My good friend, Stan Van Gundy. I'm yeah. down on what he's doing. I, I saw a big article. I've never yeah. had this kind of disagreement with a public friend of mine. Um, so we'll see what happens in the next segment on that, because I'm just catching up on this information. Stan Van Gundy is basically withholding interviews. He's thinking about withholding ESPN contact until because we of, cover yes. LeVar Ball a little more, and it feels like a threat. A little less, you mean. A little less, rather. Right. We, he doesn't want him covered. He wants... Uh, right. Well, I want to get to the details of this story in a second. Don Lebertard. I don't know anything. Stugatz. I don't remember what I was going to talk about, so in those instances, what I have is a default that just makes fun of Stugatz. You're welcome. This is the Don Lebertard Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. I think I will be done with this conversation with this question that I will just put to the audience, and I will leave it alone, and you guys decide whatever you want about All right. this. At Lebetard Show, the question is this. If Alabama had the University of Central Florida's resume, would you be arguing on behalf of Alabama as national champion today? Just answer that question, yes or no. We don't know any of their history, their resume, nothing. Just I'm, isolating I'm telling it. you that they're 13-0 and 0 through that conference. I'm giving you exactly that Alabama this year did exactly what Central Florida did. They had an easy schedule. Allegedly, they beat Memphis and South Florida or whatever. I'm, I'm simply asking you, you don't even have to answer for me, just to consider the question of whether you think you'd be making the argument on behalf of Alabama today if they had done exactly what UCF did Game by game, schedule by schedule. And that's what I'm asking you. But that's what answer- I'm asking you to consider today. But I don't need to answer it. Do I need to answer it? Like, if we all promise to answer it on the poll at Lebitar Show that's on Twitter, it. will you drop well, it? Yes, I will drop it. Okay. I will drop it. All right, I just voted no. So let's move on to other subjects. What's going on with Stan Van Gundy? I want to understand this a little bit better. I want to hear this Steve Kerr sound. Evidently, Rick Carlisle, the coaches are fed up with a father having, in, in, the coaches in the NBA are fed up with a father being able to criticize their coaching. And they have rallied around each other where they are threatening to not be available to ESPN, its partner, with morning shoot arounds and media availability unless we stop covering LeVar Ball the way we're covering him. And I, if I'm ESPN, whether I'm corporate po- sponsors with the NBA or not, I'm not letting the NBA tell me that I have to cover LeVar Ball less because Rick 
Carlisle and Stan Van Gundy think that that's how ESPN should be running their business. You can't dictate who we cover. You can't do it unless you want to make an exchange. Let me choose your draft picks for you and decide who your starting lineup is, and then you can tell us how to run ESPN. Well, we kind okay. of do do that, but they don't actually give us the power to influence their decisions. So but I we, guess they could say this and we just won't listen. Well, we can't listen. No. We cannot listen. Right. ESPN cannot listen to these coaches rallying around each other telling us to cover LeVar Ball less. They won't. We're also the face of this, I guess, because he went on first take and whatnot. But a lot of the stories recently, they're originating out of the local papers out there, the L.A. Times. Well, they, what you have is an attack on the established structure where a dad wants to be in charge of the team, a professional team. And the coaches are saying, no, we're in charge of the professional teams. And furthermore, we want to censor your ability to criticize Luke Walton. That's right. what's happening here. All of a sudden, Rick Carlisle and Stan Van Gundy are threatening ESPN's access to them, well, it's, on, the coaching, it's the coaching fraternity thing, but I also think it's, hey, this is something that could happen to me down the road. We could take a high-profile oh, draft pick. I understand, I understand why they don't like it. I just wonder what they think ESPN's job is. Do they think ESPN's job is to protect the coaches, or do they think ESPN's job is to produce interesting content? Uh, that's that's a good question. That's just what I'm talking about, the right. difficulties with these partnerships. We are in bed with the NBA, so they can have influence over some of this stuff. Hell, they blew up Stan Van Gundy being on the right. pregame show where Doug Collins, they blew it up. And Stan Van Gundy said at the time, he said specifically, you have to have no testicles whatsoever to pay someone millions and millions of dollars to broadcast their game and then allow them to let you, allow them to the choose dictate, your right. content, tell, allow them to tell you how to do your job. And that's exactly what Stan is trying to put pressure on right now with which, ESPN. Which is odd. Uh, it's just odd. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Stan did a show with us uh, for a few years, did a show once a week, an entire show with us once but, a but week. But it's so. not odd, though. It's just inconsistent. It's not even hypocritical. Well, Human beings are inconsistent. And now that it's affected Stan's direct purview he is selfish about how he's examining this but i'm selfish about how i'm examining it i'm looking at it and you're not going to tell me how to cover somebody correct I don't you're think not going to tell espn how to cover somebody well, is that selfish are we being selfish like no hey we know what we're doing and don't tell us no, how to do that, it no there's ego in it and there's yes we are co i'm coming from my prism on this which is you will not tell espn how to cover basketball right. and stan's coming from his prism on it which is this dad will not tell our coaches whether they're coaching well or not. And I will say this, when it comes to getting an honest and interesting answer, you may not like it, but an honest and interesting answer about what's going on with the L.A. Lakers, I trust LeVar Ball more than I trust Luke Walton to give it to me. Well, I that, do. Actually, I do. Well, that's th on you, man. Why is that on me? Well, but hold on a Mike, second. When though. have you heard a coach hold say on, Hold on. I'm with Gats on this. Luke, Luke Walton is paid to wear a professional disguise. You're not going to get an honest opinion from Luke Walton. And what's he believes in the character of his team. And I'm not going to get one from LeVar Ball either. Uh, that, dude's a, that dude's a, a circus clown. And we're all playing agree. his game. I'll get something that feels closer. He's, like. It'll feel closer than the truth than whatever the coaches are giving you in these interviews where I, they're being boring on purpose. Hold up. As if he doesn't have his own agenda? No, he does. of course I, he I, does. No, but this is why it's incumbent upon you to be discerning. Of course, everyone's got their own agenda here. You've got to examine who deserves the power of that agenda. Like that, you, That's where you have to be discerning and you decide whose side you're on. You on stands? You're on the content machines? Or you on LeVar's? And I say all of them can coexist, but the thing that becomes problematic is when they're paying each other. When they're physically That's paying the each other, all of a yes. sudden you're not doing journalism anymore. You're doing... Well, who's you're, paying you're each man, other? We are paying... We're, we're paying the NBA. We're paying the NBA so they can pay their players with billions and right. billions of dollars. And now they want to tell us. And furthermore, the access to coaches is going to be cut off if you, if you're going to, if you're going to tell, you know, going to give LeVar Ball all of this. And who the hell do these people think they are? Stan included. That they're going to tell ESPN who they can cover in a free America when we're paying you money. He can't, but Stan's the only coach I want access to. I don't care about Rick Carlisle. I mean, who cares about his access? Uh, what is Steve Kerr? Steve Kerr, man, these coaches, this code of blue, man, these, they're like police officers. Listen to Steve Kerr on this same kind of thing. You know, where we're going is we're going away from covering the game and we're getting closer to just sensationalized news. And um, it's not even news, really. It's um, complete nonsense. Um, but if you package that uh, irrational nonsense with some uh, glitter and some ribbon, people are going to watch. Um, so you know, I've talked to, to uh, people in the media this year. I said, why do you why do you guys have to cover that guy? They say, well, we don't want to. 
nobody wants to, but our our bosses tell us we have to um, because of the ratings, because of the readership. So somewhere, that, um, I guess it's in Lithuania, LeVar Ball is laughing <laughs> at all of us. People are eating out of his hands for no apparent reason other than, you know, He's become like the Kardashian of the NBA or something, and and that sells. And that's what oh, is true in politics and entertainment and now in sports. Um, it doesn't matter if there's some, any substance involved with an issue. Um, it's just can we make it really interesting um, in a for, for no apparent reason. There's nothing interesting about that story. According to you, I uh, man, I find what I find interesting is how threatened they are by this cartoon clown that they would be threatened by the idea that ESPN is covering a cartoon clown in a way that Steve Kerr. Do you ever put it on the poll? Are coaches against laughter? Yes. Just put it on the poll. Are coaches against laughter? Are they anti laughter? I mean, in any level, look at Little League basketball. No coaches like to deal with the the dad that's complaining about his son's playing time but or anything my, like that. Now make that dad give that dad an ESPN platform. It's my, a lot to deal with. It's so rare. It happens all the time in youth sports. It is and high school sports. It's so rare to see it in professional sports. So when Steve Kerr says it's nonsense, what is nonsense it, about a dad ripping his son's coach? I've never heard a story like it this, before. This is what I am telling you. If ESPN wanted to really sort of show the NBA, because we got a contract, billions of dollars, give LeVar Ball a TV show. Give him his own reality show, and let's see if we can turn him into the Kardashians. Give him his own show. Don't don't listen to these coaches. Go the opposite way and actively defy them by giving LeVar Ball a TV show. Put him on the pregame show. Don Lebatard. What would you say, Stugatz? I feel like you misrepresent me all the time. You've been doing this show with me for a long time. What is my viewpoint about coaches? Because I feel like even... They don't matter at all. Misrepresentation? Stugatz. I don't even know why I bothered asking you. What do you mean? This is the Don Lebatar Show with the Stugatz on ESPN Radio. True or false, Chris Sims? John Gruden once compared you to warm urine running down his leg. Uh, That is a true statement. Yes, he said worse as well, but I can't repeat everything else he told me. Why did he call you warm urine running down his leg? Uh, because I probably messed up one of his little babies, which is, you know, like his plays. I probably messed it up in the huddle or the execution of it. And we're watching a film and he, you know, in his little Chucky Gruden face with his, you know, sh- you know, shrunk up nose, that look he gives you. And he, I mean, I mean, you know what you are, Sims? You know what you are? You're like warm <laughs> running down my leg. Um, well, you thanks, te- like- appreciate that, man. Were you laughing? Were you terrified? Like, can you yes. put us there? Well, well, be- no, I was laughing. I, I mean, I was definitely, yeah, I was laughing. He always had great, unique ways to make his points. Uh, and I appreciated them. I mean, you know, come on. I'm from New Jersey. My dad, uh, I grew up with my dad being, you know, coached by Bill Parcell. So I understood how the NFL football world worked at that point. Well, explain this to me, Chris, because you seem to be similarly minded to us. I feel like in a lot of those instances that people are professionals. They have their own personal pride. And so that that doesn't actually become coaching. That's just a guy being frustrated and being a jerk, and he's got the power of leadership. But did you find that to be helpful coaching when they'd call you warm urine running down their leg? Did you find that to be coaching? Yeah, 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 I know what you mean. And I think if it was like the first thing he ever said to me in my first meeting ever, then, yeah, that would probably not go the right way. But, I mean, he said those comments to me after getting to know me and realized that I had thick enough skin to handle okay, that type enough. of treatment. Fair enough. Yeah, and, and so so he, he's good that way. He's got a great feel for players and the way, what they can handle and what they can't. Who's not good that way? Who was a guy that was just your warm urine running down my leg and he, didn't, ca- he didn't care whether he knew you or not? That's how your dad was treated by Parcells, right? No doubt. Yeah, certainly. I, you know, I mean, yeah, it's a no, that's a no nonsense, you know, coaching tree, the Parcells Belichick coaching tree. They don't really want to hear the excuses. This is what they've taught you. They've thoroughly taught you it. We walked through it. We talked about it in meetings. How dare you screw up my practice? Yes, that's kind of a different attitude. Uh, Gruden was more, sim- more in the way of, you know, one of the guys just, you know, BSing in a room. You come in. He's going to show you things on film, maybe make fun of you for the dumb things you've done, but then also show you things that motivate you and go, look, you know, he'll be, hey, man, look, 
you can be like this, and he'll bring out a tape of like 1988 Joe Montana throwing to Jerry it. Rice, yeah. Yeah. and then that was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, that seems that that seems like that would be. It's a lot what he of did in the turkey way. hole pass. Right, he brought right. out footage of well, Brett Favre throwing the, thing, the turkey hole. So yeah. the thing is, people are intimidated. <laughs> I, I think we just realized something together as a show. People are intimidated by the John Gruden personality type. But what you're telling us is that John Gruden is just really jocular, and while he might be angry, it's not the Parcellian thing. So he'll call you warm urine running down his leg, but he's just sort of the the language of intimacy among men. Yes, exactly right. Uh, that's exactly the way to put it. Yeah, he's going to uh, be one of the guys. He's going to laugh. He's going to tell you how much he likes you and how much he cares for you and, and the potential he sees in you. And he always used to say, I mean, he used to go, hey, man, man, I mean, you need to be worried. Like, when I don't yell at you anymore, that's when you need to be worried. <laughs> and, uh, and I knew he, uh, that was, he was right. And then when when he wanted me out the door of Tampa, that's when he stopped talking to me and stopped caring that I was messing up checks and things like that. Once you gave the game your spleen. Right. Yeah. Uh, number 50, the 50th best quarterback. Chris Sims is totally right here that Blake Bortles is getting in everybody's way, and he's the 70th best quarterback in the world. Uh, uh, 19 spots lower than his backup, Chad Henney, who is 51 on this list. Wait, before we get to 50, Chris, I'm wondering, were any or right. all the quarterbacks playing last night, were they all better than oh, Blake Bortles? were there any quarterbacks better than Blake Bortles playing last Last night, I don't think so. Wrong. No, no, not at this moment. Certainly not. I mean, there's, you know, the, the freshman at Alabama certainly got potential in what we saw last night. I mean, that was amazing for a freshman to come in and that kind of instance and perform under that pressure. But no, I'm not putting them in that category quite yet. It would be great, though, if number 50 were like Rosen. It would be well, great if you just threw in there a college quarterback. But let's see. We have time for that. The number 50, 50th best quarterback in the world, according to Chris Sims, is... Mark Sanchez, Chicago. What? Oh, for the love of God. Oh, for the love of God. <laughs> You're making this very difficult, Chris. You're making this very difficult, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Thank and, you. I appreciate it. I'm glad I, yeah. Well, I'm glad you're having me on, man. This is yeah. fun. I really am enjoying this. A Mark Sanchez led Jacksonville Jaguar team goes That's to the right. Super Bowl. That's right. Bleacher <laughs> Report is where you check out Chris Sims. Chris Sims, I know it's counterculture. I know it's sound. He's totally right about everything. Blake Portal stinks, man. You want to know something, Chris? Um, Actually, the, the, for the first time, kind of a light has got off my head because Mark Sanchez took the Jets to back to back AFC That's right. Well, this games. is the yeah. thing. We're learning more and more that all sorts of random things decide championships. Last night, it's a safety yes. making an amateur play that right. makes Alabama the champions. And what, what, right. what Chris is saying is right. a lot of people would be doing that for Jacksonville this year, but Blake's getting the credit because Jacksonville well, is the best team in the sport. And Chris, I'm laughing no at, I, I'm laughing at it, but, but Mark Sanchez took a team with a worse defense to within a game of the Super Bowl. So maybe you're right. He's right. Not maybe. Yeah, He's right. With worse, worse, worse offensive talent around him, too. I mean, you know, that's just a, a simple fact. We are in this weird culture of right now with a quarterback is on a pedestal. Oh, wait, hold, I mean, on, if hold, you on, hold on. Hold on. Chris, hold on. Chris, we, we got to break in. Hold on. Hold on. Baselli's mad. Uh, Baselli is texting, texting Stugatz that he wants to he wants to fight Chris Sims. All right, let's just stop everything I'm here. I'm not fighting Tony Hold on, Tony Baselli? Hold on, yeah, well, hold been, on. Yeah, he loved hold the on. just stop for a second. Find out next if Chris Sims and Tony Baselli are going to brawl on our radio <laughs> show next. Don Libertard. Did you know that Jose Canseco's finger fell off during a poker game? We did a good show today, man. <laughs> 68% of the audience said no. That's all we got today. <laughs> Is that all? <laughs> our job is done. Stugatz. That, uh, that's a quality program we put together. Good job, everyone. This is the Dan Lebatar Show with the Stugats on ESPN Radio. All right, so Chris Sims is still hanging around. I what? think I think he has a kidnapping charge on us. Like we he could we, an abduction charge of some sort. Like we have basically turned Chris Sims into a prisoner for this radio show. He has been so great, and to us. we're not treating him correctly. Like we're mistreating this prisoner. Check him out at Bleacher Report. Check out what he's doing because this man is banking time every single day for our show in a way that's annoying. Yeah, but we're grateful. But you're right, we're not treating him correctly. Uh, hence the reason that Tony Baselli is going to come on and yell at him. Well, right here's now. what yes. we have happening here, where Stugatz has basically got this friend. Friendship with this 300 pound meathead lovable oaf cartoon who is really <laughs> menacing and he's basically the face of the Jacksonville Jags when I think of Jacksonville I don't think about Coughlin I don't think about uh, Brunel I don't think about I think about this dude being better in Jacksonville than yes. anybody has ever been 
at anything in Jacksonville, but he hates me and he hates my sensibilities. <laughs> and now I'm with Chris Sims on this. I think Blake Bortles is the 70th best quarterback in the world. And Stugatz is trying to rein in, hold on a chain, this Baselli guy. So go ahead, Stugatz. All right. Well, Baselli, let him have it because you texted me during that segment. And Chris Sims has, you know, 69 quarterbacks ahead of Blake Bortles. Blake Bortles is one of the final eight quarterbacks remaining this season in the NFL. So Baselli, let Sims have it. Go ahead. He's here for you. Well, first of all, listen, I appreciate it. Chris Sims almost died bleeding to death on the on the football field, which is the only cool factor that he has in his entire life, outside of his dad's <laughs> great, too. Um, and for him to say that Blake Bortles is the 70th best quarterback is just the most ignorant, ass-nine statement I've ever heard. And first of all, I see it every day, and I'm here. And Chad Henney is not better than Blake Bortles. Trust me, if he was, he'd be playing. And Mark Sanchez, by the way, isn't either, and I'm an SC guy. Hold on. Because Mark Sanchez Tony. isn't running for 89 yards yesterday. Calm right. down, He's Tony. found a way to win. Come on, give me a break. All right, but what Tony, ju- just so you know, though, Tony, Nick Saban, the greatest in the world, didn't know that his second-half quarterback yesterday was better than his first-half quarterback until he actually did it. So that's not a good point you're making. I disagree with you there. I think he did know, but before we're, because of recruiting purposes and everything else, he doesn't want these future recruits to think that they're going to lose their job immediately if uh, he brings them in. So Boom. I think he's playing a little po- po- uh, politics there, Dan. Boom. So well, well, take that I, I, from I, I, this uh, cartoon Sims, character. Sims, 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 don't you try to no, butter Sims, up the Baselli. Sims, okay? you defend yourself, Sims. Defend well, yourself. I would say Caldwell's playing politics by trying to make his third pick of the draft continue to be the starting quarterback of the team. And, you know, I have watched them. And it's not whoa, just whoa, like whoa, an Whoa, 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 Sims. I have an asinine comment. I get that. Like, listen, I understand it's something I'm not proud of, but it's the dead truth. It's all there really no, is to it. I've been no, watching no, film no, for no. four and a half years, and you know more about offensive linemen, but I know more about quarterbacks, so sorry. I, I actually, I think after your stupid comments, I might know more about quarterbacks because guess what? Dave Caldwell isn't making the decision, idiot. It's Tom Coughlin. He's in charge down here now. Wow. So what well, he was a that? little stuck. Take that. You're, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Whoa! <laughs> that's that's fine. Listen, I'm not going to mess with you, but that's just the way I feel. I study this hard, and really, I, I understand you're sticking up for your franchise and all those things. Uh, but I can also tell you that most of the coaches didn't want your job in Jacksonville last year either because they didn't want to deal with Blake Bortles either. That's so true. Just, That's true. That's true. That's true. That's true. And, and guess what? Most of those coaches are at home right now watching the playoffs as we play Sunday. But, Sully, are you a paid member of the Jacksonville staff? It's a team sport. It has nothing to do with anything. The, the, the Denver Broncos won the Super Bowl with the 34th rated quarterback in football. So we all put quarterbacks on a pedestal and act like, whoa, we can't win unless it's Tom Brady. No, that's not the truth. I mean, okay, Tom Brady's got tons of help around him, and, and so does Blake Hold on. You just said so. You, most, you just actually said something halfway intelligent. As a quarterback, you are admitting that you guys aren't quite as important as all you think you are. I'm always truthful, hence Blake Bortles being 70. That's he's what this really gets well, Okay, he's not 70th because he's not. Be- he's better than Chad Henney. Who's 69th? Tell me that. Uh, I can't really let me pull it's up my all, list. It's, it's, it's Austin while. Davis. Austin hold on, Davis. Hold on. I'll give you the list. You it's want Austin the whole Davis. list? Yeah, no, it was uh, 69. I think I went with what? TJ no, Yates? No, TJ Austin Yates Davis. is 68. Oh, come on. I, we, I see, there's no chance. Cardale Jones is 67, Baselli. Well, Card- oh, God. This, this is going to make him explode. Yes. Hold on. Make Baselli. him explode. I, I Baselli. The, uh, the fact that you bled, almost bled to death, you got much, so much. Just be quiet for Baselli. 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 I'm going to make your head explode. He has Nathan Peterman ahead of Blake Bortles. That's right. <laughs> Nine spots That's ahead. Right. That's right. And I'm with them. Obviously, obviously, you better watch the film a little closer. No. I did, uh, Tony, I mean, every quarterback in high school football would have hit some of those throws last week. I watched it. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, That's so, he's got, I, Sims, are you sweating at all? Because I'm with all, Sims on I this. I will be sweating if I see Tony in person. I promise you I'll be walking <laughs> well, Sims the other is way. Right. <laughs> Sims is right about this. He's got Sean Mannion six spots ahead of Blake Bortles. Dan, Baselli. Dan he is not right. And first of all, you don't know what the hell you're talking about. You wouldn't know how to evaluate any football player. Wait a minute. <laughs> Baselli, 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 are you still taking checks from the Jaguars? Yes or no? That has nothing to do with this conversation. Uh, yes or no? Answer my question, Baselli. Yes or no? You're taking you're taking checks personally from Coughlin to do this infomercial stuff, selling Blake Bortles, and we all know he stinks. <laughs> 
I can't confirm or deny that I'm taking it. You know, I know it. I know it. You've been smoked out, Pacelli. <laughs> I got Pacelli. You off cartoon I, I you. got you. How many millions are they paying you to be Baghdad Brewski and sell your soul to defend Blake Bortles when you know very well that he stinks? Say it before we get out of here. I want to bully the bully. Baselli, admit on the paycheck that you have from the Jags that Bortles stinks. Say it. No, he's not great. Baghdad Baselli. Hello, I'd like to deposit this to checking. Fate is a fickle master. What? The future is uncertain. Okay, and what's my account balance? Ah, oh, the horizon is cloudy. I see a long, treacherous voyage um, filled with great peril. Look, can I just get a deposit slip or something? A fortune bank teller. Surprising. What's not surprising? How much you could save by switching to Geico. I see a yellow-eyed serpent what? and a low APR. Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.